السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala His household, his companions, may Allah bless them, bless every one of us, grant us goodness And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to favor us uh, during these blessed and beautiful days. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we were going through the supplications of revelation and we moved through to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tells us in a narration that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught me the following. He told me and instructed me to make a dua to call out to Allah using the following words. And I started off this hadith and I continued, but the reason why I want to pick up from that particular point is because we need to understand the value of these words. Here is the best of creation speaking to his most beloved who is Aisha radiallahu anha. Once the Prophet sallallahu was asked, who do you love the most? He said Aisha. And then he says her father, subhanallah which means Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. So here is the most beloved unto Allah telling his most beloved something very important. What is that? He says, use these words to call out to Allah. Imagine he is telling his most beloved, his wife, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, he is saying, use these words to call out to Allah. We are so fortunate to know what those words are. Amazing. Look at the value of it, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us of these words. And I made mention of these words. Uh, I'm moving on to another hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, uh, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us uh, this dua, Allahumma aslih li deeni alladhi huwa ismatu amri wa aslih li dunyaya allati fiha ma'ashi wa aslih li akhirati allati fiha ma'adi waj'al alhayata ziyadatan li fi kulli khair wal mawta rahatan li min kulli sharrin that oh allah oh allah make good for me my deen that is the most important of my affairs make good for me my dunya which is the world that i need to live in or in which my life is and make good for me my hereafter where I am actually going. That much we have already covered in the previous episode. Now we go to the next part of the same dua, the same supplication. He says the Prophet ﷺ taught him, وَجْعَلْ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لِي فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ O oh Allah, make life for me a means of increase in goodness for me. O oh Allah, make life a means of increase for me in every goodness. So if you're keeping me alive, let that life be a means of increasing my goodness. You see, if we go back to the Anbiya and the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, instructed, for example, Yunus alayhi salam, uh, there is a narration that makes mention of how he would be receiving a reward, a double reward uh, for everyone who was guided and everyone who did good. The same happens to every one of us to a different level, obviously, but we also get a good reward for those whom Allah has used us to guide. Now, while we're alive, let that life be a means of increasing the good. Let that life be a means of increasing the good. If Allah knows that now the life that you're going to be having is not going to increase you in goodness, but it's going to make things worse, then that is where you say, oh Allah, take us away. Take us away. So we're not making dua to Allah to take us away because of a problem we have, a difficulty we have, but because lack of obedience or lack of seriousness. Uh, we might not be on the best terms with Allah the day He takes us away. And that's called a bad death. The best death is to be taken away while Allah is pleased with you. And the worst death is to be taken away whilst Allah is angry with you. So, وَجْعَلِ الْحَيَاةَ زِيَادَةً لِي فِي كُلِّ خَيْرٍ O Allah, make life uh, 
um, goodness, make life an increase in goodness for me in every way. So as long as you're keeping me alive, let goodness keep on increasing. And let death be a means of ease for me from all the evil. You know, you're saving me from evil. So whenever you decide to take me away, let it be a blessed death such that I've just been saved from disaster that is to come, something bad that is to come, whether it is evil within or external. So the dua is so powerful because you are saying, Oh Allah, if you've kept me alive, let that life be a means of goodness. And if you've taken me away, let that be a means of me being saved from calamity, disaster, negativity, etc, etc. So I'm going to repeat this dua inshallah with the idea of perhaps all of us may be repeating or saying it uh, with me or after me. Uh, inshallah calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma aslih li dini yalladhi huwa ismatu amri wa aslih li dunya yallati fiha ma'ashi وأصلح لي آخرتي التي فيها معادي واجعل الحياة زيادة لي في كل خير والموت راحة لي من كل شر that is the hadith, it's narrated in Sahih Muslim. There are different narrations of the same hadith with slight variations in wording, but uh, th that could be because the Prophet ﷺ taught it several times. He may have used it several times, taught it to different companions, slight variations in wording. You know, al akhirat allati ilayha ma'adi in one narration, here it is fiha ma'adi. So this is a beautiful narration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's, and it's a lovely du'a. That is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anh. The previous one was that of Aisha radiallahu anha. I'd like to move on to the narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Another narration. You see, Allah subhanahu wa taala instructed Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to call out to him to seek knowledge to seek increase in knowledge. Although Muhammad وسلم, was the most knowledgeable, and although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon him the greatest and the highest favor, uh, Allah says, وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا and say, O my Rabb, increase me in knowledge. So the Prophet وسلم, having heard that, he immediately uh, used to make this dua quite often. اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني ما ينفعني وزدني علما O oh Allah, benefit me from the knowledge that you have granted me and grant me knowledge that is beneficial and grant me increase in knowledge. So O oh Allah, benefit me from whatever you've taught me and teach me what will benefit me. That's the literal translation of it and increase me in knowledge. So this hadith is absolutely important because it shows us the various rights of knowledge. We need to seek knowledge, we need to benefit from the knowledge, and we need to want increase in knowledge. Increase in knowledge will come when we have practiced upon that particular knowledge. So when you practice upon knowledge, you get increase. The same applies to wealth. When you earn, you will only earn more in real terms when you start spending. So there is no point in earning and amassing. The Quran has actually cursed the person who has earned and amassed. Wailul uh, You know, destruction be upon those who uh, are very. Uh, abusive with their tongues, they lie, they have uh, you know, deception and they uh, despise and so on. Who are they? The ones who gather their wealth and keep on counting it. So they're miserly, they come up with so much and they keep counting it and they have not benefited anyone with that wealth. They haven't benefited from it as well because you only benefit from the wealth when you spend it, when you use it. That's the only time you actually benefit from the wealth. So um, in this narration also, uh, we are taught that uh, 
if I am to say, Allahumma fa'ni bima allamtani, oh Allah, benefit me from what you've taught me, that would mean I need to make an effort to put into practice what I've learned. If I've learned, what will happen is I must be able to benefit from that knowledge. What's the point of having so much of knowledge and you haven't even, you haven't even practiced upon that knowledge? It is a waste of knowledge, isn't it? So this is why the hadith says, Alimni ma yanfa'uni. Teach me that which will benefit me. Now, one might say it should have been a different order. Oh Allah, teach me that which will benefit me and benefit me from that which you have taught me. Teach me that which will benefit me and benefit me from that which you've taught me. That, that's what one might have thought is the order and it is the order in another narration. But this narration is correct, authentic and it goes to show that what is more important is to benefit from the knowledge. What is more important is to benefit from the knowledge. So I have knowledge that is beneficial, but have I benefited from it? Someone might say there is repetition in this hadith. There's no repetition. The reason is I can have beneficial knowledge and do nothing with it. So what, what has happened? It's beneficial, it's good, but I haven't benefited from it. So one is to get beneficial knowledge and to benefit from the beneficial knowledge. The, and the, the benefit is mentioned before getting the knowledge because of its importance, because of how serious that matter is. And this is why at the end uh, it says, Zidni ilman, O oh Allah grant me increase in that particular knowledge or in knowledge. This hadith is narrated in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and it's something we need to constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us to learn and to put into practice and to convey to others. I sometimes sit and I think how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, how seriously they took up knowledge and the study of knowledge, they passed on the baton generations, it is as fresh as ever and it's come to us. When we sit with the Quran, we know for a fact that these are the words of Allah, unchanged, uncontaminated, although it's 1430 odd years later, but subhanallah, we are convinced. The same applies to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There are narrations when we are so convinced these are the words of the Prophet as fresh as ever because we know they made a great effort. My brothers and sisters, surely we could make even uh, a small effort uh, and inshallah we would be earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to actually move on to another beautiful, very, very important hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he used to say, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min an nushrika bika shay'an na'lamuhu wa nastaghfiruka lima la na'lam. This is a beautiful hadith. It has uh, many different narrations, many different wordings. So the one wording that I've made mention of here is Rawahu uh, al-Imam Ahmad. There is another one which says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم وأستغفرك لما لا أعلم. You see, the greatest sin that could be committed by mankind is shirk. Shirk meaning association or partnership with Allah. Sometimes people don't know or they don't realize or they don't, uh, you know, pay attention to certain things that could just be shirk. It could be association of partnership with Allah. It's important that we give this matter, uh, you know, uh, great relevance because. It is a matter that is very, very serious where Allah says, I will forgive anything but shirk I won't forgive. Surely we should be talking about it. It's something serious because some people don't like to talk about it. They say, what's this? You know, why should we keep repeating this issue? Because that's the only thing Allah says, if you were to do it, I'm not going to forgive you. If you were to do it, I'm not going to forgive you. So I'm going to be speaking about it. You should be speaking about it. Everyone should be speaking about it. And whenever someone speaks about it, we should be from among those who realize its importance. So much so that the Prophet, peace be upon him, himself has taught the people. This is a hadith. Uh, of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a lecture one day and he says, Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaqu hadha shirk. You know, O people, be careful of this shirk, be careful of it. And the hadith goes on to say that he taught us a, a dua, he taught us a dua that we should say, 
اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نشرك بك شيئا نعلمه ونستغفرك لما لا نعلم O oh Allah, we seek your protection. We seek your protection from having engaged in any participation of or in any association of partnership with you, uh, that which we know, and we seek your forgiveness for that which we don't even know. Subhanallah. So it shows us that there are two different aspects, that which you know, that which you don't even realize. You know, my brothers and sisters, when we sin, Sometimes we don't even realize we're sinning because it's become so common sometimes. You know, we backbite without realizing you're backbiting. We engage in slander sometimes without realizing I forwarded a message, uh, I've spread something and it's a major slander. So sometimes we become, you know, uh, subconsciously we just pass it through without thinking. This is where we need to improve, inshallah. We need to start becoming more conscious of what we say, what we do, what we forward, what we receive, and so on, even on our mobile devices, which is, uh, you know, the current device of the age, the mobile device. Everyone has it, and we're so into knowing what's happening in everybody's life. That is quite dangerous. But that having been said, that is connected to sin. That is connected to uh, in participating in that which would displease Allah by doing what He doesn't want you to do, which is lesser than shirk. However, there is something far greater than mere sin. And that is shirk. It is association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only should we be careful of it, learn what it's all about so that you know what it is and what it's not, but you should also ask Allah to protect you from shirk. Oh Allah, protect me from shirk. When last did we say that? Let's be honest. Oh Allah, protect me from shirk. Oh Allah, protect me from association or partnership with you. I can't remember when last we've said that. Subhanallah, here is a dua. The, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum are saying that, Oh Allah, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu is teaching them this dua. Oh Allah, we seek your protection. We seek refuge in you from shirk, from committing uh, shirk, which is association and partnership with you in a way that we know and we ask your forgiveness for that which we don't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who really understand this issue. You know, when Luqman, the wise, uh, who was, uh, according to the narrations, he was from Noba, he was from uh, Sudan, uh, an African. Allah makes mention of him in the Quran because of his advice. Allah makes mention of him in the Quran because of the advice he gave his son. The first piece of advice he gave his son. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقُمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Remember when Luqman gave his son advice while he was advising him, he said to him, O oh my dear son, do not perpetrate shirk, do not engage in shirk. Do not associate partners with Allah, for indeed that is the biggest sin you could commit. Subhanallah. Here is the man giving the pieces of advice. He starts off with one factor that we don't even talk about sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand and realize. So my brothers and sisters, we move on to another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this time of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. It's a powerful narration as well. And it goes to show that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was indeed sent as a, as a mercy to us. He was indeed sent as a mercy. He taught us every single thing. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum say, مَا تَرَكَ خَيْرًا إِلَّا وَدَلَّنَا عَلَيْهِ وَلَا شَرًّا إِلَّا حَذَّرَنَا مِنْهُ There is no goodness that he forgot to teach us. Every goodness he taught us. And there is no evil that he did not warn us about. So we really uh, have to praise Allah for this beautiful gift that he has bestowed upon us. So this narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to say, he used to say, so he didn't just say it once, kana yaqulu, he used to say, Allahumma laka aslamtu, O Allah, unto you I have submitted, for you I've submitted. Now, I want to pause for a moment and remind you while you're listening to this, every one of us should be thinking about it for ourselves. O Allah, for you, I have submitted. 
اللهم لك أسلمت Oh Allah, for you I have submitted. وَبِكَ آمَنْتُ And in you I have believed. Oh Allah, I have submitted unto you and I believe in you. وَعَلَيْكَ تَوَكَّلْتُ And I have laid my full trust in you. This is the beginning of a beautiful supplication. وَإِلَيْكَ أَنَبْتُ And I have turned to you. I have returned to you, you know, al-inaba, to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in obedience. Wabika khasamtu. And through you, I argue. You know, when we have an argument, when we have a dispute, it's all through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for the sake of Allah and it's with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's either to portray the truth or it is to achieve justice. It is Al-Khasm actually means a dispute and Khasama here could mean, uh, you know, when the, the argument or the dispute, when we say through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's for Allah, it's for the sake of Allah. Either to achieve uh, clarity about worship regarding who Allah is, etc. or even just for justice. So, O oh Allah, it is through you that I argue or dispute. Allahumma. Inni a'udhu bi'izzatik. O Allah, I seek refuge in. I seek refuge in your power. I seek refuge in your power. From what? Now, before making mention of from what, the, the, the du'as pauses for a moment and uh, it says, La ilaha illa anta. There is none worthy of worship besides you. So, it's worded this way. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi'izzatik. La ilaha illa ant. Antudillani. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in your power, in your might, and there is none worthy of worship besides you from being led astray. You see? So it's actually the sen- the middle of that has in it La ilaha illa ant. There is none worthy of worship besides you. O oh Allah, I seek the protection in your power. There is none worthy of worship besides you from being led astray. Subhanallah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi'izzatik. La ilaha illa anta. Antu dillani. Subhanallah. Now it continues praising Allah. Anta al-hayyu alladhi la yamut. Wal jinnu wal insu yamutun. You are the all living. You are the ever living. The one who does not die. But as for mankind and jinn kind, they will die. So the dua here is only asking Allah that we be saved from being misguided. That's all. But look at the introduction, the, 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 the praising of Allah. Oh Allah, for, uh, I surrender to you. I believe in you. I lay my trust in you. I return to you. I, through you, I dispute and argue. Oh Allah, I seek protection in your power. There is none worthy of worship besides you from being led astray. You are the all living, the ever living who does not die. The jinn and the ins, you know, humankind, jinn kind, they do die. Subhanallah. So this is something really amazing. It's a hadith, Rawahul Imam Muslim, and it goes to show that we will surrender to Allah. Uh, this is actually a beautiful dua uh, that we can make all the time. Oh Allah, I surrender to you. I believe in you. You know, when I'm in dispute, it's you that I'm always, always after, O oh Allah. And I want you to protect me from misguidance. And it also goes to show how serious the issue of misguidance is. You know, when people are misguided, it is the worst thing that could happen to someone. Guidance is in the hands of Allah. So definitely we need to ask Allah guidance. And Allah allows that misguidance. Therefore, we ask Him to protect us from misguidance as well. So my brothers and sisters, that's the beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, I look forward to the next episode. And until then, aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa